Hi, welcome to this tutorial on how to get Reader installed and running on your machine. So the first thing you need to do uh, to get Reader running is to install Reader itself. I'll include the links um, for this tutorial below the video, but the first thing you need to do is go to Reader's GitHub page, which looks like this. Um, there's a lot of information uh, on the program itself on this page. But what you need to download is uh, one of Reader's official releases. So if you click on this tag under releases, you will find um, the version of Reader to download. And you can just download this setup file. So we can go ahead and download that. Once you've downloaded that, you can click on uh, that setup program and it's basically a Windows installer that'll walk you through. Now um, you might get this notice from Windows Defender saying it's trying to protect your computer. Uh, if you click more info here you can still choose to run it anyway if you trust it as an application. Um, so I'm going to click run anyway. It'll ask if I want to allow this app to make changes to to the device, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Okay, so um, once we do that, we'll see sort of the typical Windows installer here. There's a license agreement at the beginning you need to accept, otherwise it's pretty easy. By default, it'll install Reader uh, just in the C drive at the top under the, under the heading Reader. Um, I've already done this before, so it already exists, so I'll just copy over that folder. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you want to create a desktop shortcut, you can do that. Um, so I'll go ahead and say next and install. And the install is pretty quick because it's a, a fairly lightweight program. All right, once it's done, we'll say finish. And so now we should have Reader installed on our machine. The only other thing you need to install is Energy Plus itself. And the current version of Reader, Reader uh, V1 Beta, is compatible with Energy Plus version 9.5, which isn't uh, the most recent version of Energy Plus, but it's, uh, it's pretty close. So uh, I'll also include this link under the video as well. This is basically uh, NREL's uh, GitHub page, and this is uh, downloads for Energy Plus version 9.5. Uh, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can find uh, the version of Energy Plus 9.5 that you need for your computer. Uh, since Reader currently only runs in Windows environments, um, it would be one of these files here. Uh, I think this is the one that I typically download here, this x8664exe. Uh, you click on that, that will also be a Windows installer that you just click through and install on your machine. Uh, I've already done that, so I'm not going to download Energy Plus again, but uh, fairly straightforward process. Okay, so uh, once you've installed Reader and you've installed Energy Plus version 9.5, you are ready to uh, open up Reader and try to run it. So I'll minimize this. Recall that we uh, installed on the C drive, so that's where we can find it. And notice it also um, did put a, uh, a reader shortcut on my desktop here, so I could also just launch reader from, from my desktop. But I'll go ahead and open this up. So uh, this is my C drive. This is where it installed reader. You'll see a number of different folders and files here. For this video, uh, we're just focused on how to get up and running as quickly as possible. So I'm, I'm not going to talk about everything here, but just the main things you do to get reader running. Um, so. The main things to know about are the model input template. This is where you define uh, your actual uh, building models. Uh, Reader EXE, this is what you use to launch a session of Reader. And um, basically any output that Reader generates will show up in the projects folder. So that's the other thing to know about. So um, since Reader already includes some example models in the template, let's just go ahead and open up uh, a session of Reader. So you'll see a couple of different boxes here. Um, this is the uh, this is a Python GUI. 
that was made using uh, TK Enter uh, that we used to define our reader project. Uh, and then this black box here is where reader will write all of its output during the run. So um, the first thing that you need to do if you're using reader for the first time is make sure that you're properly linked up with energyplus.exe. Once you've done this once, Reader will remember your address, but uh, you have to do it. By default, uh, we include the default install location of Energy Plus. So if you chose the default location, it's quite possible that you could click Run and this would all work just fine. If you chose a different location, you can click Browse and locate uh, where on your computer Energy Plus version 9.5 is located and locate energyplus.exe and just say open. Uh, we already did that so we don't have to do that. Um, you can enter a project name. Here we're just going to say example project. Um, I'm going to go through this more in future videos but you can set different options for your simulation run period. You can do an annual run. Uh, you can do a sub-annual run and you can define your start and end dates over here to the right. And finally, you can do a test run. A test run is basically a diagnostic run that just simulates a single day at uh, one time step per hour, uh, basically just to make sure that you're not getting any input errors from Reader or from Energy Plus. Um, so we'll end up doing that, but just showing a couple other things here. Um, you also have choices on what uh, granularity to uh, output your data. So that can be, if you're doing a sub-annual run, that can, do, that can be uh, anything from hourly level to time step level. So it could go down to one minute um, if that's the time step that you establish in your runs. You can also choose which outputs, uh, which end uses to output. So you can do anything from all end uses to uh, very specific end uses such as heating, cooling, or lighting. If you're doing a, an annual simulation uh, with annual output, it just outputs all end uses because in that case you're not generating a lot of data unless you have many thousands of runs. However, uh, if you're doing, uh, if you're doing a, either an annual run uh, with hourly or time step granularity or if you're doing a sub-annual run with hourly or time step granularity. In that case, you could be generating a lot of data, especially if you're doing, say, you know, 15 minute or one minute time steps. These file sizes can get very large, so that's one reason why we give the option of having uh, specific end uses here. But um, for this tutorial, we're just going to do a test run just to show how things work. So we're going to do that. Um, you have a couple of uh, radio buttons down here for various things. This enables uh, or disables multi-threading. And uh, this is a box that you can check if you want to ask before overriding uh, a project folder with the same name. So if, for example, we had already created a project with the name example project, uh, this would ask us if we're sure we want to overwrite this uh, before going ahead and running. Um, so we'll go ahead and click run. The, uh, the Python GUI fades away and uh, Reader starts uh, doing its thing. So it, it'll give us feedback here uh, in, the, in the command prompt. It'll first read in that input data then it'll go on and start building the models. So that's actually building uh, all the IDF files that it's going to send uh, through Energy Plus. Go ahead and then it runs everything through Energy Plus uh, in a batch process. And then finally, it'll generate all the model input. And when it's done, it'll tell you whether or not things were successful. So if we click Enter, that'll go away. And the last thing to know is that your output will end up in this projects folder. So if we go to projects, we can double click on that. Here's the example project that we just created. And within that uh, folder, we'll have subfolders for each individual model run. So in this case, we had four example models that were defined in our model input template. Within each of these folders is the output from Energy Plus itself. So if you wanted to see the raw output from Energy Plus, 
you could go ahead uh, and still see that here. Reader also generates its own aggregated report, which is called the run report here. So you can double click on that and that will show you an aggregated report of all of your runs with automatic unit conversion, um, which makes it really easy to then go ahead and do uh, further analysis and creating uh, various types of charts and tables. All right, so that's it. That's how to get uh, Reader installed and running on your machine. Uh, we'll be putting future videos showing how to do various specific tasks.